this is a fume extractor. It's fine. It does the job. I only have one problem with it, really, and that's its size. It's too big, and for a lot of people, that's probably a good thing. But for me, I just don't need a fume extractor this large. I don't ever solder large items like PCBs that would benefit from having a wide coverage from a big extractor like this. The soldering I do consists of very basic circuitry work like using motors, switches, and LEDs, and this is all done within the confines of my helping hands. Because of this, I find myself annoyed by the big fume extractor. So, naturally, I went in search of a smaller fume extractor. Like, really small. Browsing an assortment of 3D printing spaces, I went in search of extractors that use these little 40mm fans, like the ones on a lot of printers. I had an image in my head of what I was looking for, specifically something that could attach to a flexible arm on a soldering station, and while there were a few options out there, I decided to design my own take anyways. I thought this was going to be a quick project, so I got to sketching. I had a really, really really clear idea of exactly what I wanted. And then I dropped it all because I thought, what if Kirby? It was too perfect of an idea not to pursue. A quick search revealed that, unsurprisingly, I wasn't the first one to have this idea. A pretty popular model by Joko MX already exists. <laughs> Sorry if I butchered that name, but there were elements of the design that I wouldn't do personally. Specifically, it's designed as a one-part print, and because of this, there's quite a lot of painting. The back of this design is also flat. I understand why this is done to save plastic and to make printing it in one part easier, but I personally didn't like the look. So I dropped all the designs I had done and got to work. This design process was a learning experience for me. I'm used to more engineering design and not character modelling, and after designing this Kirby I was left with even more respect for character modellers than I started with. Kirby is like about as simple a character as you can get, it's literally a blob, but getting the proportions right and especially getting the feet to look right took me several tries, even for such a simple shape. I wanted the design to be as seamless as possible, so I've used printed threads to let the main body pieces screw together without any hardware. The arms are glued on, and the feet glue on to this connector piece which then slots into the back. My design still requires a little bit of painting for the details on the eyes, but the areas are recessed to make this as easy as possible. From the front, you can't see any of the technical components, which I really like, but from behind, you can see the stand and the outlet grill. Here you can also see the dovetail feature which allows Kirby to tilt up and down to better position the fan to whatever he's extracting. And... Uh, yeah, that's Kirby. I was going to release the video at this point, but I felt that while Kirby was good, there were some elements of the original design that I felt would be a shame to ignore. And, realistically, not everyone would want a Kirby. It was a simple enough design, so I went back to the original idea to make a second model fume extractor. And so that leaves us with two mini fume extractors. The second model has a little more functionality than the first. It can sit on a bench like Kirby, but its real purpose is to be mounted on a flexible arm, like the original designs. This allows it to be as out of the way as possible while still doing the job well. Both models have no form of switch or batteries, they plug directly into a cable. They're both printed in PLA, use next to no non-printed hardware, and the same 10mm charcoal filters. On the topic of charcoal filters, I think it's worth mentioning that they are not a perfect solution. Charcoal filters remove much of the particulate from the air, and move the remaining particles away from the user. This isn't a problem with my designs, it's present on all these basic extractors. Because of this, it's still advisable to always solder in a well-ventilated area, even with an extractor. The filters also need to be changed. On Kirby, you need to unscrew his face. And on the Model 302, the vent in the back unscrews to allow the filter to be replaced. There's a second version of this model with the mesh in the front as well. 
it's up to you which one you print. Almost all of the extractors I've found online have the filter in front of the fan, but I've seen a few with the filter behind the fan, and I like the way it looks more. I presume having the filter in front increases the life of the fan, but at the end of the day it's your choice which one you make. I've found they both work well. But now I have three fume extractors, and I just don't need that many. What if... <laughs> so, as a final, final afterthought, I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I could feed Kirby my garbage? That sounded better on paper. So, I made a quick adapter piece for my vacuum, a custom scoop, and stuck him on my bench to eat up all the yummy little bits of print off -class. Is this actually useful? Uh, probably not, no. Overall, I'm happy with how the project turned out. I used Kirby for a couple of months before moving on to the more practical version which I've used since. Both function well, one obviously is a little more useful, but it's of course up to you which you print, if either. If you want to make either version, the files are in the description. I'm not sure if I'll do a build guide for these since they are pretty simple overall, but I haven't ruled it out entirely. Thanks, as always, for watching. <clears throat> Ta-da! It's a Christmas video now. My seasonal quota has been fulfilled. <laughs>